Okay guys, I'm back with more Shadow Rush Shujo. In the last episode, we were... Was that in the last episode? Yeah, it was. Running with, uh, with Emmy. And now we are eating lunch with uh, Emmy and Rin on the rooftop again. As expected. What's that supposed to mean? This time it's Emmy who shrugs. It's like she's using Rin's own weapons against her. Your response is the sort of thing I'd expect from you, that's all. Am I really that predictable? <laughs> Emmy's smile seems to border on gloating. Nah, it's just that your unpredictability unpredictability, not ballady. It's pretty predictable. Well, that's all right then. I don't get the chance to see whether Rin's being serious or not, as the bells ring. I didn't notice the lunch period slipping by at all. Hanging out with these two was far too interesting. Emmy jumps up a little, <coughs> a look of panic on her face. Oh no, I needed to stop by my room to pick up my notebook for the next class. Don't you wish you had a time machine now? Rin seems rather smug as she delivers this line, like she's just won an argument. Emmy ignores Rin's comment. Sorry, Hisao, but could you make sure our garbage gets thrown away? I usually clean up myself, but I've got to run. Sure, no problem. Emmy darts away with an urgency. I'm starting to expect from her. I don't bother asking Rin why she d couldn't help. She already seems to be preoccupied with something else entirely as she wanders off. She's probably used to Emmy taking care of cleanup, <coughs> and for some reason I doubt Emmy's ever raised the issue with her. Cleaning up from lunch uh, doesn't take long, so I have plenty of time to toss our garbage and get to class. Misha agrees, <laughs> greets me with a wave and a, a devious grin as I walk through the door. Didn't see you in the cafeteria, Hichan. Yeah, I decided it was too crowded there. Misha's grin gets even wider. Oh really? Are you sure you weren't participating in the illicit rendezvous? Well what? What are you talking about? You were on the roof, right? With both Rin and Emmy no less. You cast an over you. We we just had lunch, that's all. Misha bursts into laughter, <coughs> drawing the attention of several of my classmates. Wahaha, <laughs> you're so dull when you watch like that, Hichan. She gives me a conspirational wink. Don't worry, your secret's safe with me. There's no secret. Oh? Misha seems disappointed and then brightens up again. Time will tell. I don't know what the hell she's talking about, but blessedly our teacher comes in and the class starts. Another day of class has finally dragged itself to a close. Unexpectedly, I managed to stay awake for the whole day. I'm pretty sure that counts as a miracle. My legs seem unwillingly. There was no Lee there, you freaking unwilling <coughs> to stand up for a moment. I guess the run took a lot out of me. I head down the hallway and make my way to my own to my room. Blah, not my own room. Uh, I sit down and half-heartedly chip away at my homework for a while, feeling like a vulture picking at a particularly unsavory carcass. It knows this is what it eats. I don't know. <laughs> but it's not sure that it should be ordering takeout instead. Uh, I don't think I can take this, but it's important to get my work done. Now let's see. What was, what, uh, what was I supposed to be looking over again? I know it's a losing battle, but I fight it anyway. Halfway through my math homework, I put my pencil down. This isn't working. I need a distraction. Unfortunately, my on my options for distractions are rather slim. I'm not in the mood to read right now. Kenji is usually is unusually out of his room at the moment. If I go to the student council room, I'll just end up doing work for those two. 
and heaven only knows where everyone else is except for oh I suppose that's an option I grab my shoes and head for the track game is probably down there track practice is just ending as I arrive in this I didn't read it there the sun's beginning to dip down dip low in the sky has it really gotten that late already what are you doing down here is out come to spy on me have you I have a shrug to be honest I'm not sure why I'm down here I didn't have anything better to do. I figured that's about right. At the moment, Emmy is the only person I can think of who I could visit. So I'm your last resort, am I? Nobody cool around, so I'll just go see Emmy if is that what you thought. She's a, she actually looks angry. A chance for some teasing of my, of my own presence itself. Actually, yeah, I guess you are. Emmy pouts, widening her eyes to give the maximum amount of puppy dog resemblance. Kidding, I was kidding. So you're down here to stalk, to stalk me. Wait, what? That's not what I meant. How would I stalk you anyway? It's not like you're cry stalking. If you're not asleep or in class, you're down here, right? Emmy looks, laughs at this comment. <coughs> well, you're not all wrong, I suppose. But you forgot about eating. I do that too, you know. I nod, conceding the point. Plus, I hang out with Rin sometimes too. So really, I might have some effort to stalk. What do you two do together anyway? You don't seem to have a, a lot in common. She puts her hands on her hips and assumes a superior air. That's what you think. I've got all sorts of hidden hobbies, you know? Oh really, like what? Abby puts her head to one side as she's trying to remember what if she does what it is she does in her free time. Well, Rin and I go out shopping sometimes. I guess that makes sense. Emmy's a girl after all, but Rin? Rin comes with you? We usually swing by the art supply store. Plus, she likes this music store that sells all kinds of weird uh, sounding stuff. She says it helps focus her. That makes a little more sense. I see. Any other hidden hobbies? Emmy wags a finger at me. Now, now, why should I go and reveal all my dark secrets to you? We hardly know one another. Somehow, I think that's all that Emmy has in the way of hobbies. Still, I don't think my question's been answered. Even if you have a few hobbies, I still don't see why you hang out with Rin so much. I mean, she's kind of weird, isn't she? This comment causes Emmy to laugh loudly. Ah, that's the understatement of the year. So why? I mean, you're a lot better at conversation than stuff. So I figure you'd hang out with a lot of people, and I think I've only ever seen you with Rin. Emmy seems unusually defensive. Hey, I hang out with plenty of people that aren't Rin. You just don't see me doing it because I'm not in your classes. Okay, but that still doesn't explain why you hang out with Rin. I'm not even sure why I want to know this. I guess it is because lunch was so strange. Amy shrugs, looking for a moment, for a moment very Rin-ish. It's because we have similar outlooks. If you were to ask me the li at least likely answer to my question, that would be it. What do you mean? It's like, okay, Rin paints and stuff, right? Yes. I'm not sure where this is going. Well, I run. And? And that's where... That, and that's why we're similar. <laughs> you lost me. Let me frowns as if trying to figure out her answer. Well, maybe it's that we do things for the same reasons. Huh? You know, we follow our passions. So you're passionate about running and Rin's passionate about art, is that it? Well, sort of. Let me think. Well, Vern explained it to me once, but I don't know how much it, of it if I, words, how much I, of it I followed. Not surprising. I think any explanation from men would probably confuse anyone. She says we both chase after an extreme, like she's always trying to find a new way to show a particular feeling or something, and I run because of the feeling I get from it. And since we don't allow ourselves to be slowed down by anything, we make a connection based on that. What do you mean slowed down by anything? Amy looks surprised and points to her legs. You know, because I'm a runner and runs a painter, even without arms. So you respect each other's determination. And that's why we hang out. I think, well, I'm not sure that made any sense to me. But from Emmy's sheepish expression, she's not sh uh, she's not sure about it either. Honestly, it's not something I think about much. 
We just get along. I think that's really all that matters. I suppose she's got a point there. Another question strikes me, and since I've got nothing better to do, I ask you. So what got you in so? Uh, so what got you so into running anyway? Oh, I've been running since I was really little. My dad was a runner, and so as soon as I could walk, he started teaching me how to run. It was our father-daughter thing, you know. Our own mutual hobby. A shadow crosses her face, and I'm shocked to see her looking sad. Did something happen between them? Man, I don't have a lot of time left. Sorry, but I've got to get a few more laps in before I get uh, before I go see the nurse. She races off around the track, her uh, hair streaming in the wind. It seems to me she's got a lot fa she's going a lot faster than she was this morning. As she rounds the track, I catch a glimpse of her face. It's uh, it's much the same as it was this morning, but her eyes seem to have taken on a harder edge. I guess she's right. I don't really know much about her. I watch her run for a little bit, uh, for a little while, and then <coughs> stand to head back to my room. Hey, she spots me leaving in ways to catch my attention. Don't forget, same time tomorrow morning. Got it? Got it. I head back to my room. Homework beckons. I can't sleep. My body's tired, but my uh, but my mind is kept awake. Staring at the ceiling is the in the hollow <coughs> darkness of my room. I grasp desperately, bleh, desperately, for a thread of thought, hoping that I can run my brain into the ground. All I can think of is how I can't think of anything. This is not productive at all. I wonder if this is a side effect of my medication, though it seems odd for it to take so long to show up. Then again, maybe I'm just not as used to minute surroundings as I'd like to think. I don't know, but for whatever reason, I'm awake and I shouldn't be. This is ridiculous. Ignoring my body's stiffness, I get out of bed and look at my clock. Four in the morning. Last time I checked, it was only one. So maybe I slept a little. I don't know. I throw on some clothes and head out of my room. A walk might do me some good. I'm surprised at how chill the air is compared to the relative warmth of the day. I can almost see my breath as I wander the campus waiting for the sun to come up or for me to fall asleep. At this point, either option works for me. I find myself at the track where, uh, where for the first time Amy's not out running. <laughs> I suppose that makes sense, it's too early even for her. <laughs> the bleacher sets are cold, but at this point I welcome the sensation. The sun is starting to show its face over the horizon, and I know uh, with an awful certainty that, I get, uh, that I'll get no more sleep tonight. The sun's steadily strengthening rays start to warm me up, and I, w I watch the dew on the ground begin to steam lightly. My mind calms down a little. Someone's shaking me. Probably Emmy. <laughs> hey, wake up. Huh? Where? What? I guess I fell asleep after all. What are you doing out here? You're going to catch a cold or something? I rub my eyes and am confronted by Emmy who bends over me with a worried expression. I'm still a little groggy, so my response comes out in a mumble. Couldn't sleep, watch the sun come up. Sounds like something Rin would say. I shrug, feeling the stiffness that comes with sleeping on a bench for a few hours. Is it? I wouldn't know. Amy grins a little at my somewhat cranky response. So, couldn't sleep, eh? Obviously we need to run you, be uh, run you harder today. Even though I've only known for about a week, this seems a very Emmy-ish response to the problem. Hey, my body was plenty exhausted after yesterday. My mind was just racing, that's all. I don't see the difference. If you har run hard enough, your brain will get tired too. I'm seriously questioning the wisdom of doing this first thing in the morning. I don't know if my grades will be able to handle me tiring my brain out like that. Emmy pulls me up from the bleachers and surprising, with surprising strength for someone her size. Now come on, Hisao, we've got work to do. I don't actually know if I'm up to this today, to be honest. I mean, I obviously didn't get much sleep, and what sleep I got was on the beach bleachers. I don't know, should I really be running? Amy glares at me. Good heaven. What are you talking about? Of course you should be running. How else do you expect to work out the, uh, the kinks? 
You've been sleeping on the bleachers for heaven's sake. This place, uh, <clears throat> the best way to get that soreness out is to run around a little. Now stop hiding in the bleachers and get down here. <laughs> There's no arguing that. I'm pretty sure she'd kill me if I didn't go, uh, if I didn't do as she said. I get to my feet and hop down to the track. The sun is warming things up rather nicely, I think. Amy and I begin to stretch out and I find myself once again hard pressed not to stare. If this is how I have to wake up every day, I might be able to get used to this. You know, Hisao, it's not polite to stare. I wasn't staring, I swear. Emery raises an eyebrow and considers me for a minute as if evaluating my response. There's a brief moment where I'm afraid for my life. But then she smiles and laughs, shaking her head slowly. Honestly, it didn't have to deny it so strenuously. In response, I clap my hands together and go for a change of subject. So, I think I'm stretching, right? Amy gives a casual shrug. Do you feel stretched? That's really how you tell. Well, I do feel up to the run, if that's what she means. Yeah, I feel ready to go. Same as yesterday, okay? We'll just run for a mile at a steady pace. Don't worry about getting really fast. Going really fast. Just uh, worry about keeping the pace, got it? You're the boss. Alright. I'll see you guys next time for more... Kadoa Shujo.